and the Romanian border is the journalist Mircea Babu. Great to have you on the show, Mircea. We really appreciate your time. And Vicky Price is still with me, Chief Economic Advisor at the Centre for Economic and Business Research. Mircea, of course, the main point about this war is the ghastly human suffering, the sovereignty issues involved. But the economic fallout is getting more prominent. It's getting talked about more, isn't it? How do you see the interaction between the economic issues of this war and the military issues of this war? Well, indeed, uh, Blaim, they are not separated completely. Um, as any war, economic and um, human suffering are often intertwined. And I've seen that since the first day of war uh, in Mariupol, where I was when the war started, up until uh, today at the Romanian-Ukrainian border, where every day I talk to people, mostly Romanians living on the Romanian side of the border, or ethnic Romanians living on the Ukrainian side of the border, who are complaining that their, their lives are being affected by the war every day by the fact that there are no investments coming in or out of Ukraine. Jobs are mostly put on hold at the moment, and that obviously brings more suffering and more tension and more stress to families already fleeing conflict. Now, that's the human interest, so to say, aspect of economics and, and human suffering. But there is a, a, a regional that could potentially turn into a, a world problem happening right here between Romania and Ukraine. And I'm going to briefly describe it for you. Um, as you probably know, Romania, uh, Ukraine has um, Ukraine, Belarus and Russia account for about 80 percent of grain export in the world, Ukraine being a third um, of one of the largest exporters of grain, a third of that coming from, from the country currently at war. Um, now, all the ports at the Black Sea, and not only at the Black Sea, but all the ports that Ukraine has at the moment have been block blocked by Russian ships. That means in, in, in practice that the grains are not coming out, none of the exports that uh, Ukraine badly needs to support its economy. 50% of, of its ex exports are, are grain-based exports are coming out of their Ukrainian ports. What happened in Romania in the last month or so, there's been a, a very heated debate on what Romania can do about it, slash EU, what, what sort of solidarity um, we can provide. And there was one in, in the sense that the largest a uh, port at the Black Sea right now is currently in Romania, and it's called Constanza. If it's taken a lot of the grain export and a lot of the uh, what whatever trickles down into Ukraine at the moment ha happens through this port. The only downside to this is that Romania in general, as a country, has one of the weakest infrastructures in the European Union, including its port infrastructure, who, which is not which was never constructed to to cope with such an influx or to hold uh, grains for long periods. It's it's a it's as you if you want to put it this way, it's a port that um, it's mostly for transfers, quick in and outs of uh, goods, merchandises, grains, mm. oil, or whatnot. Mircea, you've described brilliantly a point that we've been making here on the show, albeit very distanced from the Black Sea, that those Black Sea ports are blocked. Odessa, the other Black Sea Ukrainian ports have been the grain funnel uh, of Russia and Ukraine for, for, for generations. It worries me not only that grain isn't getting out of Ukraine, be it Russian grain, Ukrainian grain. It also worries me that because of the huge um, turmoil in Ukraine, Ukrainian farmers aren't planting now. So it's not just a shortage of wheat now, it's a shortage of wheat next year as well. Is that something that you're thinking about, something that you're seeing? Well, that was definitely a question on my mind. And I've asked the people, farmers, including farmers I spoke with uh, throughout my journey in, in Ukraine. Uh, I, I read a quote from the Ministry of Agriculture in Ukraine, giving an interview to Romanian media, where they said they are... Um, their supplies are about to last about a year, a year and a half. And after that, they don't know what's going to happen. In terms of 
this year's um, campaign, obviously, eastern Ukraine and a lot of the central part of Ukraine is not secure to be farmed, to be um, to to have those um, spring and summer um, agriculture campaigns that will turn uh, into grains in in the in the fall. So that's a huge huge concern for uh, Ukrainian farmers. Who I spoke with personally um, throughout the last uh, weeks because obviously that was that was a question I had on my mind. And one interesting answer I've got, and it was just a, a regular your average farmer very close to Odessa. He said, you know, I am affected by the war, but think about the fact that I w- I used to export my grains to the Middle East, and there are hundreds of farmers like me in Ukraine. What's going to happen when Africa, Middle East, and a lot of the countries, the, the, the countries that are already affected by some sort of drought, migration, or conflict, they will no longer get the Ukrainian bread. That's when you will see what the Ukrainian war war means to the world. And that was uh, that was something that obviously made me think for a long time. It's, I, it's I, one I, of the biggest questions. Mitch, that is a really, really powerful point. Of course, the Arab Spring was sparked by rising food prices in North Africa and the Middle East more broadly. Mecha Babu, you've spoken very clearly and we're most grateful to you for appearing on The Money here on GB News. Mecha Babu there, Romanian journalist from the Romanian capital, Bucharest.